Right, well, what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to change the bolt on the coronet regent. So why do you need to do that? Well, what's happened is, in the quality assurance department, where they do quality checks, quality control, Record Power have discovered that the bolt that's actually in the regent and the envoy needs to be changed. The reason being that it's got weld round here, that if I show you that one, can you see, this is the new one, the weld round there. Yeah. When they've had a look at it, it's, it's caused them some concern and they've actually thought, right, rather than, they've gone prevention rather than cure, and they've decided rather than run the risk of anybody being hurt, we're going to stop everybody from using the, the lathes We'll issue them with new bolts and then the bolts can be fitted. So the reason for this video is so as I can show people how to fit the bolt, the bolt. Craig's already done a great video on it. He sent me a copy and I watched it through. And really it's a belt and braces job. We're both going to do it. It may go on my website or my YouTube or it might go on our record powers. But that's the reason behind changing this. So this is the Regent lathe and it's also going to be changed on the Envoy lathe as well. Well, that's good, isn't it? Because health and safety is the most important thing. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of health and safety, I've got my back belt here. And again, it's not too heavy that it's a two-man job. It's a single-man job. It's okay. But I like to protect my back. And I put the back belt on just to be able to give some protection while I lift the, the actual head of the lathe off. I'm going to protect my eyes as well. Take my normal glasses off, I can see better without them close up as well. But I've got my protective wrap round glasses. Don't need my face shield for this because we're not actually going to be making any shavings. I've got a pair of gloves, these are the, the rubber base gloves which give me a good grip onto the actual head itself. To start off with I'll have to take my glove off just to get this locking stood out. There's a lot of stood in here Janet. And what that is, that is designed to stop the head from coming off. So I'll take that off there to start with, and then we'll just remove that. For that, you need an eight milli Allen key, and the eight milli Allen key, we'll just loosen it off, and we'll also loosen the bolt at the bottom, which secures it in place. So I'll just pop my gloves back on. So I've took the lot and stood out. What I need to do now is just take the bar, which actually secures the head in place, put the bar into there, and just Loosen the, the actual head off in here. I'll have to do it into that one there, Janet. So there we are. That's loosened it off there. And then I can try it and I can see how loose the head is here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to lift this off here and I'm going to lift it onto the board. So if you don't mind stepping back and then let you see the view there. I've got my back belt on, I've got my gloves on and I'm going to secure it under this arm here. So I've got a good hold of it. I'm going to just take it off there gently. I've got it there. Lift it forward onto the wood. And I'm just going to ease that forward like that. Bring that here. Ease it forward. The cable has got sufficient stretch in it to be able to move the head. This is with a layer that's been, I've been using this layer for over a year now. For us to push it like that and then to bring it round so that I've got the actual mechanism here that we're going to take out so that we can see it to be able to remove it in the cameras. So what we've got on here, we've got a 30 mil nut. So I've got a, well it's a wrench to take that off and I've set it to the actual size of the nut. I'm going to take the nut off. It's a lot of nuts so it will be tight to start with. And I'm keeping my thumb on here because what I don't want is for the springs and the bearings to come out and then have to spend a little bit of time looking for them. Before you do this, if there's any shavings underneath your lathe, give it a good clean out because if they do fall off, it's easier to find them and a magnet is a very, very useful tool for that. So right, take the nut off there, like that. There we go. So right, taking the plate off like that, just carefully take it off. I'm watching the bottom to make sure the bearing doesn't come out. If I show you there, can you see? There's springs with little bearings on there. There's the bearing. There's grease on them, so the grease should hold it nicely into place. There we go. Pop that down on the bench carefully, so as you don't lose 
those bearings. Then what we need to do, this is the actual piece that we're going to replace. But in order to be able to replace it, what we need is a two and a half mil Allen key. I've got one here and I'm just going to loosen off. There's a little stud there, there's two lines. There's, there's actually four location indentations there. They're like, they're like counter sinks. And that's for the bearings to sit in when we swivel the head round. So now I'm going to loosen this off here and there's actually two little two and a half mil grub screws in here. Again, when you're taking that out, be careful, put your hand down there to try and make sure that you don't lose it because, again, if it drops into the shavings, it's going to be difficult to find. So I'm going to pop that onto there, put my finger onto there and just leave that there. Inside there is the actual two and a half mil locking stud. So that needs to come out as well, but it doesn't need to come all the way out. All we need to do is actually just slacken it off until it's about halfway out. You'll, you'll determine if it's out because you'll be able to lift that up like that. Now it's there, it's out. Okay, so there's the bar like that. Lift it up, there's the bar out. That's the, the object that's to be replaced. Now if you have a look at this, you can see the weld around there. There's not a mark on it. So in a year's worth of use, that shows no fatigue at all. But that's only visual. What Record Power will have done is they'll have done x-rays and they'll have done checks, they'll have done strength checks in the factory to make sure that they were within the CE regulations but what they want to do is beef it up and that's what they've done. So if you look at that one, you look at that one, you can see the difference. So to me, if I look at that, my description of that is that's a belt and braces job. Yes. So that's going to really it eliminates any problems that you might have and it's simple enough to replace because all we do is we lift that up pop that into there slide that into there like that and back in and that's it that's in place now so what i need to do now is tighten up that little two and a half mil rub screw from there like that so that then when that's tight you don't need to over tighten it i've said before the engineering on the record power leads is superb so we need to just put that one onto there again. Careful not to drop it into the shavings. Make sure you've got it on the end of your Allen key into there like that and just wind that on like that. And there we are. As soon as that's just tight, there, just nip it up. That's enough and that's it. So there we've got the bar on here and that bar will slide up and down nicely on there now. Back to the locking stud and the plate. Now this is the tricky bit. What we don't want to do is drop those bearings out like that. So carefully go into there. What, I did, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on that bearing there to make sure it doesn't drop out like that. And I'm just going to put that bar into the centre there. So that when the bar goes on like that, I'm going to straighten it up now. Keep my finger on that one locate the indentation or the, the countersink there there it is it's in there now then I'll put this locking nut on and again it is a locking nut so you can tighten it so far by hand but then you've got to do the rest with the spanner so make sure so what I'm doing I'm just tightening up the 30 mil nut onto there so that those bearings are in place. Just tighten it just enough and then take your bar and loosen your bar off like that. That probably is there. That's it. That's probably sufficient to be able to just position that so that you can get it on to the lathe bed like that. Because you need the clearance but you don't want it sliding about all over the place either. So again, got my back belt on. I'm going to swivel it around here. It's in place. Pull that up over there, get your arm around there to cup it, hand on there, lift it back and locate that onto there. That's it, slide it on and we should be good to go. Now if I take this bar here Janet and I just tighten that down there like that, we should be able to secure with that there to the bed like that. Now, all I need to do now 
quickly slide this a little bit farther along the bed which I'll take this sled off the bed now that's the one that we've replaced on there that's the one that's been replaced as you can see it has got a full weld round and um, but you know you've got to admire a company that decides to inform people that there may be a risk and stop it from happening and that's the whole idea of this there we go we're going to take this sled off here for now and it's a great little tool this for me to be able to turn my lathe bed into a bench and put that over there what I want to do is just slide this head I'll have to loosen the bar off a little bit more I want to slide the head there, just along the bed there we go you can see it slides nice and easily on there but then what I want to do is just tighten that up a little bit underneath here I don't need my back belt now so I can take it off I've done all the heavy work just tighten that up under there like that and just micro adjust it there we are get your bar and lift the bar let's see how much we need to do Right, now that is that is the tightest point there so what I want is just can you see it's still not quite tight there it's slack so I just need to put this on here that's tight now can you see I've got a nice tight fit on there that's slack I can move the head back like that and it slides nicely but what I can also do is I can actually swing it round into the position that I want for being able to work outboard with the outboard the outboard extension that we've got on here so I just swing it back there you can hear the bearings actually click in there did you hear that? I did, click. I thought so, it was your bones I uh, could be, right, I'm bringing <laughs> this back to here I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I do anything else I'm going to put that locking nut into there so I don't run the risk of going too far back and ruin taking the head over the top the uh, Lock of nut can go into there and then I've got my little spanner here that spanner there will just lock that nut down in the bottom there like that I can bring the head back now to this point here now watch because I've got that lock and nut on there can you see if I go to there it stops it that's the safety feature yes that's on the left so that so it kind of fall off and hurt us so there we are, lock that onto there, tighten that down to there. Now the only other thing I'll do is I'll put the centres in and I'll do the kiss test to make sure that when I'm turned between centres the kiss test is good. I'll show you how I do it and I'll take my, oh, that's my new magnetic light that goes on the back here, bring the banjo up to here and I'll also bring the tailstock up there as well. I'll loosen this off and swing that round to there so as it's out of my road back to how it was before. Right I need a centre in here so I'll take the drive centre that comes with the, the Regent and the Envoy, wind it out, pop that into there and then into here I need a drive centre and that's the drive centre that comes with the Regent and Envoy, that's the revolving tailstock centre. Put them together take that up to there now can you see on there on the kiss test the two points are not in line with each other right now can you also see where the head is on the bed there's a gap here and it's close at that point there so what I need to do is loosen that off now and I just need to carefully bring that round to here there wind that onto there so that we are point to point there, can you see how that's bang on, point to point, on there, perfect, then when I tighten this down, like that, can you see it's actually point to point horizontal, on, hang on a bit, I just need that little fraction, there, there, can you see bang on, yeah. point to point, there we are, kiss test done, and we are good to go, and with that kiss test, 
what I've done is I've made sure that when I do a spindle it's turned into round and we don't have an oval spindle and for people new to turning if that ever happens just do the kiss test like I've just done there so there we are the bolts replaced and thank you again Record Power for sending it up to me I hope when you get your bolt you manage to fit it as easy as I've done it there but if you have any problems call head office speak to Craig or speak to any of the technical department or um, drop me an email if you want to and I'm sure between all of us we'll make sure that the jobs are good so anyhow bye for now